Hello, this is Jim the Keys bartender coming to you from, of all places, yes, Key Largo. It's a beautiful day here. It's one of those perfect days I mentioned before. It uh, was low humidity, about 64 degrees. I had to do some work on the car this morning. I had a tail light out. And uh, thank God for YouTube videos. A friend at work told me when I was leaving work last night that my left tail light was out. And I just got this car last month. So, ah, you know, taillights go out. You never never know. That's one of those things. Instead of taking in, I like for taillights, obviously, and all those other things that I can do, I do myself. And a YouTube video, you know, it's nice. that You can just follow it. They don't really tell you. And they don't want you to do that. They don't give you a manual for uh, the owner's manual for unscrewing the the spring bolt that releases the tail light assembly that you bring out and then how you get the circuit board out and there's a circuit board that's holding the light bulbs and all that stuff so I did that this morning but the temperature was perfect there was no sweating it was in humid it was dry right now it's in the 70s uh, a friend of mine was doing uh, work on their tree and I was helping them load up the big ass logs of uh, it's a tamarind tree and they're they're very dense wood like mahogany so we had like they were cutting out big chunks of logs and they were weighed up to like 250 to 300 pounds so I had gone to the gym first and then I was loading these big logs onto a front end loader uh, luckily, I've been training for this. That's that's just this very moment. So it was beautiful to do that. It was beautiful to work outside. It was just one of those things. I had other things. I had business to take care of today, but I thought today I can just I'll just why not put off till tomorrow what you could do today. Well, today was March fourth, and it was. Inauguration Day of the 19th President, Donald Trump, Donald J. Trump. And it took place today in the parking lot of a Golden Corral in Stewart, Florida. Janine Pirro, the Fox News analyst or commentator, former judge, administered the oath. And the Bible was held by Scott Baio, Chachi, from Joni Loves Chachi. It was a star-studded event, and the uh, the Bible was later found to be a black leather-bound Chilton's manual for 1970 to 76 uh, Chevrolet repairs. So I don't know how they. No, it didn't happen. So I guess all you Q people, you know, you were certain that on inauguration day that. It wasn't going to happen, or you, you know, January sixth, there wasn't going to be a certification, and inauguration day wasn't going to happen, and all these things, right? And the people they interview said, "Don't worry, Trump has a plan. Yeah, he has a plan to keep stringing you the fuck along. That's what he's doing. That's why he didn't say anything today. He didn't say, hey, don't worry, I don't have a secret plan. Forget about it. It's over." He didn't say it. He just doesn't want it to be over. You know, he just wants it to keep on going on. Well, they said he has another plan then. If it doesn't work today, the next plan. Maybe it's Mother's Day, May 9th of this year. He'd become president when his uh, mother returns from death and issues the oath to him. Whatever the fucking crazy idea you have. Is it going to happen every week now? Is there only to be like one of those crazy cults where the end of the world, they came up, the end of the world was supposed to be 2012 and everyone prepared for it. And then it didn't come along. So they had to set another date. I calculated wrong. You know, they're just going to keep on doing it to you. These people with their, I mean, obviously you're not listening to the show because you've already been pissed off at me enough 
But if you know anybody, it's just they're just going to string them along and along and along and along. Just another date. There'll be another date there, and they're very sure of it when they give their little YouTube or whatever social media they're using. Now, when they're given a little description, like they're really certain about the fact that in 1871 that Ulysses S. Grant moved the inauguration from here to there. And it was, you know, Trump would have been the 19th president on March 4th. And it didn't happen. And, and you probably still because there's it's only one thirty. I'm filming right. I'm filming right now. I'm recording right now. One thirty. There's probably still people waiting in their bunker. I mean, it's just giving them hope. They're just more and more and more, and they just a little, you know, maybe the next one, maybe the wick off support with this thing. Okay, well, I'm I'm done with that. I'm absolutely done with that. But. A news story broke out yesterday from the Miami Herald, and now it's national news. And it takes place here in Key Largo. A exclusive enclave, you may have heard me speak about it prior to this, Ocean Reef made its very exclusive, one of the wealthiest and most secure enclaves in the United States for the super uh, wealthy was one of the first places to receive shipments of the vaccine. Mid-January. Mid-January. Yes. Now, I received the vaccine, but that I received it from a hospital in the Keys, and I was a hospital, I'm a hospital employee. But they received it up there. Um, 1,200 doses, I think, or enough for 1,200 people. So they have to straighten that out. And right after they receive the shipment of doses up there to their medical center, I imagine they did receive it at their medical center, a bunch of contributions ended up in the campaign for uh, Governor DeSantis, our dumbest shit governor down here, as he's one of the ones to open up right away, like uh, Texas and Mississippi, now Alabama. The bunch of states are just doing away with mask mandates because they want to, even though the CDC and experts say it's not a good idea with the variants raging right now and having only having about a little over 8% of our population inoculated. So, that story is developing. I saw that yesterday and I shared it on my page, but I'm sure it's going to be something down here. Our local paper in the Keys is not necessarily that hard news, so we have to really depend on sources like the Miami Herald to break stories like this. And I I understand that it's tough for a small paper. And it's owned by, I don't know who owns the free press. But I'm pretty sure it's not a crusading owner that wants to do right by everyone. The big thing now besides uh, in the paper is the genetically modified mosquitoes. Yes. A company, uh, the solution to getting rid of mosquito-borne illness here at the Keys, here in the Keys, and the tests are being made, is to make mosquitoes or the uh, the male mosquitoes sterile in order to keep the main bearers of mosquito-borne illness for humans. And I think it's mainly... This is from what I stand, understand is the Aedes aegypti is the one. There's maybe another mosquito that does that. But there's all different types of mosquitoes, mosquitoes that are attracted to certain animals and things like that. But the Aedes aegypti is the one of the ones that feeds on humans. 
and which make him, them most appropriate for passing along mosquito-borne illness, illnesses to humans. And people are worried about it. Just They just think that you know people are going to get stung and there are going to be mutations and we're going to have all this stuff. Uh, you know, mutations occur natu- naturally. They do. And we just see it with the virus, the coronavirus. There's mutations because we let it, when we let it, we helped let it run rampant. Meaning it would have ran rampant on its own. Life will find a way to propagate itself. But with their billions of people having been exposed to the virus, Every time it jumps from a, to a new host, there's another opportunity for it to mutate. And that's genetic modification. And people don't seem to get up in arms about the genetic modification of the coronavirus. Matter of fact, you know, some of the people that are against it are against the mask and the vaccine. And wearing the mask helped prevent the transmission of the coronavirus and the less transmission there would have been would have been less opportunity for it to be a variant that's that's science okay that is science and I'll leave it at that we in the keys though we are still experiencing the height of Season, and I went to my local favorite uh, barber, Doris, at the 103 Plaza. It's called 103 because at the mile marker 103. And she's Cutting Design is the name of the place, Doris, and she's one of those rare entrepreneurs. She was working at a place down in Central Key, uh, Key Largo, but she opened the place up here in more North Key Largo. I'd have to say. And or central, I guess we're central too, because North Key Largo could be all the way up in Ocean Reef, where that big story about that gated community getting preferential treatment when it comes to the vaccine. Well, Doris has this beautiful little place in a strip mall, and I go to get my hair cut there, and she was telling me that it's just her. And what she's really looking for is a manicurist, a nail technician. And there's people that just, there's proof, one anecdotal evidence that not all places are, you know, people out of work. In the Keys, if you want to work, there are jobs for you. There are plenty of opportunities. Like, if it's it's like the gold rush days where, if you ever seen the show Deadwood on HBO, where people think, well, they're all rushing down to Deadwood or around Deadwood to get their claim on some gold mine. You got miners and all this shit. And there's people say, well, I'll just provide services to the miners, which is a much better idea. A much better idea than just going doing the gold digging where you're going to end up if you're in the middle of a, a gold rush right where the gold is being dug up that's where the price deflation of the precious metal occurs the most and the inflation of the goods that you need to support the extraction of the precious metal So gambling, liquor, prostitutes, hardware, like shovels and spades and all that stuff. It was all priced differently than you would if you went to Chicago at that time. I think that's the 1880s or something like that. So here we are in the Keys. Now, I don't know how long this gold rush is going to last for us because now that Texas is opening up, Mississippi. I don't hear a lot of people say, hey, pack up the kids. We're heading to Mississippi. You're not going to be family 
in uh, I'm not saying that Mississippi's a beautiful state, but you just don't you know here it's not like a big they don't have a big budget for tourism. Texas, on the other hand, they have a huge budget for tourism and a lot of different places. They got Padre Island, Galveston, San Antonio, Austin. And then you got the big cities of Houston and Dallas. There's a lot of things to do in Texas. And, um, you know, with the weather weather starting to warm up, I don't know how long it's going to last here. But it is gorgeous today. And there are a lot of people in town. As evidenced by, and there's a lot of people living here now. There's a lot of people that are deciding to move down here from their states they consider the keys they have in their head that the keys are a little more free they certain type of people like the governor we have people that like I guess maybe because they like I like a little bit of incompetence and ignorance when it comes to my state officials well then Florida is the perfect place for you you know they'll point to and say hey listen we got these low, low rates of infection. But we also have a governor that wants you to do low reporting about the rates of infection. And they start shutting down the testing facilities and things like that so they don't know what's happening. So, I know, I'm getting off my soapbox here. There are a lot of people down here right now. And like I said... Just like Doris looking for a nail tech. She was saying she was looking for someone who'd either... And she gave him options. She could either work at her place. She'd book the appointments and and pay them a portion of what they get. Or they can pay rent to use their facility. Now, rarely do people give you options like that. But there's, I know tons of people. There's at the, the Trade Winds Shopping Center in the center of Key Largo. There's a second floor up there where they have someone set up an area for hairstylists and nail um, manicures for people to just come in and say, hey, listen, for whatever, like 200 bucks a week, you could rent the space. And it's already, you know, approved by licensing and inspection. So they can just come in and start doing business there. As long as, I guess, they have to have a a business license themselves. But all the other things that go along with it are already checked out. Set up for it. It's set up as a hair salon and people have set up their own thing. And it's not a hair salon per se. It's a big room with... That's set up for a hair salon. I know, it's weird. And they rent the spaces. Which happens a lot of times. People don't realize at barbershops and hair salons. A lot of these places, people just come in and say, Hey, listen, they pay so-and-so amount a week for the privilege of cutting hair there. And then they take all the, you know, they take all the money for when someone sits in the chair. And they just pay the owner. It's great. It's great. It's a win-win situation. Win-win situation. And the whole keys is kind of like that. If you look on it as an opportunity to make some money. I always thought it was when I developed my delivery service or my baby furniture or transportation. You could do it here. You could be a gig worker, work for some third-party online app like Uber and Uber Eats. You know how I feel about Uber Eats. It's a, res- a res- uh, recipe for disaster for privately owned restaurants. Considering the narrowness of profits that occur and then paying out a percentage of the profits, a percentage, almost all of your profits, to a company in order to get them to deliver their food. And whenever... The people aren't happy with the food. They're not going to necessarily blame the driver. They're going to blame the people that prepared it and cooked it. They're going to say this food is horrible. Well, 
you received it an hour and a half after we made it. It was shaken up, carried around by your person. They may have reached in there and ate it. You never know. When they get hungry, some of these people are working really hard and they just decide, they say, oh, well, there's two chicken cutlets in this Parmesan. They won't miss one. I could see people just reaching in. Yeah, just reaching in and grabbing it. What the fuck? There's food right there. I don't have to go for it. No, but I digress. There's money to make. And like I said, bartending, serving, cutting hair, doing nails, any type of service, tax preparation. Some some things you have to establish a little trust. I decided to do my notary service because I noticed a lot of places... They don't want to be open on Sunday. And I just realized, hey, listen, all I have to do is I'll concentrate my business on the time that other people aren't open. Yeah, maybe only a 20th amount of business is done on Sunday. A 20th. So everyone shuts down on Sunday. Well, why not? If I took all the business, that 20th amount of business would be, may end up be 60 to 70% of my volume that I need. It's all common sense. If you're providing a service, provide a service when there's little competition, right? On Saturday night down here, we have tons of Uber drivers that come into the Keys. Uber and Lyft. There's a local taxi service, Mom's Taxi. And some people are sticking with them no matter what. Instead of calling Uber, they call Mom's Taxi. But when Saturday and Sunday rolls around, they don't bring in a lot of extra people, Mom's Taxi. They may have an extra person, but they don't have to because there's a shitload of other people that come in here. And there's no competition when it's slow. Because an Uber driver or a Lyft driver doesn't want to have to wait. Let's see. What if you get like five calls in a day and you got to be available 20 hours? And you end up making... $10 $10 each one. That's 50 bucks. Well, if you're a retiree, that may be a good idea. But for anybody trying to earn a living, that's not really great. So it sucks having to compete against those. There's a lot of other places that don't have competition. I mean, there will be. There will be competition, especially from the online services. It's just one of those things. You're going to fill a gap. They, if, there's a, if there's a service out there, just like Instacart for shopping services and stuff like that, you see it. All these supermarkets since COVID-19, they've set up areas for pickup of online deliveries. I see them set up new refrigerators for orders that they shopped. And then when people come, they just take it out and deliver it it's it's almost like in the in the beginning when I came up about seven years ago when I came up with delivery service idea there was no competition down here there was no one that did it none of the supermarkets offered it and then people started getting wise to the idea and there were online applications out there but they were in the big cities like Miami. And there wasn't an impetus to drive that service into more rural or cyclical communities. Like when I say cyclical, because we're kind of like a mid-sized city in season. Where normally we have 9,000 people, we can end up having like 18,000 people. Our population doubles or even more. And no, and with the seasonals coming down and stuff, we're going to end up getting like 25,000 people. 
And then it becomes worthwhile. But the thing that gave the big push for almost anything online that reduced the amount of time people had to spend inside was COVID-19. And people were paying premium to do that. So they came down. Now, this is the thing. Once people get inoculated and get ready, all these people then invested money in Instacart and the services and things like that. I think the supermarkets are going to always do well because they're going to have, they're in the best place to profit the most from doing that service because they have employees that know where it is. They can just say, hey, listen, you're a stock person. How would you like to do this and make a little additional extra money? All right? Because they already work there. So these Instacarts and these other ones, they're going to be dealing with, unless they make the online apps, make the conversions to try to incorporate themselves into the supermarket, they're going to lose out there. Not so much with Uber Eats and stuff like that. I think that's going to die of natural causes. Because they're always going to do, Uber Eats kind of makes sense that, yeah, McDonald's, Chili's, Fridays. Is there still Fridays around? Olive Garden. Pasta, yeah. I mean, there's got to be a shitload of, of room to, of profit in pasta. Because they used to do unlimited salads, unlimited breadsticks, and all that stuff. When it comes to to-go orders and stuff like that, you just say set quantity, and there may be 50% profit in there. And they say, well, listen, we'll just give it, you know, we'll give you 10%. They're still making money. But these mom-and-pop restaurants, not the same thing. Mom-and-pop restaurants, they depend on the soda, the drinks, the beer. The food's important. The food's important. I've seen some... I never really understood with restaurants, these small family restaurants that had a BYOB because they'd lose out for that. They'd have a corkage fee sometimes for the wine, but they'd lose out on such a huge item. Bottles of wine, bottles of beer, draft beer, mixed drinks. Yeah, take it from a guy that doesn't drink. That is a huge profit. Sodas. Sodas are a huge profit. Because it costs about a nickel to a dime. No matter how much someone drinks. I mean, they can't drink. They can't drink themselves out of a... I mean, the possibility could. But you really can't drink yourself out of a profit when it comes to soda. Or tea. I mean, what's it, $1. fifty for one of those big tea bags? They make the th- same thing. They get like 50, oh, 50 glasses of tea out of it. I mean, it's a nickel. It's a nickel glass. So there's, get back to the profit. There's money to be made in the keys as of now. Once this is over, who knows? Who knows? There's money to be made. Real estate uh, agents are going to be making money. Hopefully, signing agents are going to be making money, like people like me. Uh, One of the people that may not be making a lot of money is what I do, the podcast. Right? Well, maybe because of my quality. Well, fuck that noise. I'm still going to do it. Episode 402. Yeah. Fuck you. I'm going to keep on doing it. I'm my podcast will in let me see. So it was April 2017, it'll be four years. Next month, my uh, in five weeks, the podcast will longer than the presidency of Donald Trump. And I can keep on going, I don't need to make up a bullshit 
fake inauguration coming in. You know, Trump's mother is not going to rise from the dead and declare him winner. Jesus is not going to come back and declare Trump the winner. And I'll tell you something. That being said, if Jesus came back, fuck, I one thing I'm all, off, awfully certain. Unless you're praying to Republican Jesus, you know, the Jesus that doesn't like immigrants or poor people and values wealthy people more, that Jesus, see, that Jesus may like, well, he still may not like Trump because not all wealthy people like Trump. But the Jesus that loves the poor, the needy, the stranger, the immigrant, the people that are a little different, the infirm, that Jesus would be pissed at the Trumpsters. And he will he would set you straight. And it's Christian nationalism and all that bullshit. That would go by the wayside. Oh my God. That would just if you believed in the fire and brimstone and the final, I can't understand how you could support this guy. Because you'd be the first one if there was, what did they call that? The, um, when everyone's taken directly. You'd be taken directly to hell. That's what we did. Hell, no waiting. Just, you know, oh, you're going, nope, they're taking you down. They're sucking you right into the bowels of the earth. That's what I would be afraid of. That's why I don't think they really believe in it. They can't believe in it. You can't be that mean and believe in that stuff unless the religion wasn't bastardized. How could it be how could it have been bastardized as much? The West Hill Baptist Church to be so mean spirited. How in Jesus' name is that possible? I don't get it. Just say, I guess they can make anything to their benefit. Well, this is Jim the Keys bartender. I'd like to thank you for listening. I'd like to thank all my foreign listeners over there. I hope we didn't piss off anybody from India. Just turns out, you know, there's a a lot of English speakers in India, and that makes for a great place for telemarketer or, you know, phone banks to get people. And I understand desperate times need desperate measures. And if you need to make money, why not call up an American and tell them you need to send some money because some fraud has occurred. You're going to buy, have to buy some gift cards and you'll have to give me the numbers. And the next time I do that, oh, is that my phone coming up? I think that was my phone popping up. But I'm going to, Next time I get a phone call, I'm going to really try to uh, keep them on a little longer and see what's going on. I know that may not, I don't think, I think they're handling the phone. Just because you're making the phone call and stuff doesn't mean they're adept at hacking. I'm not afraid they're going to hack and find out anything. Well, once again, like I said, thank you for listening. If you like the show, please share it with your friends, your family. Send us a message at jimmykeysbartender.com. Uh, check out, I'm going to be uh, doing more affiliate marketing and I'll put it on the, I'll put the links in with the, the show's description starting next week. I got the Apogee, I think I'm going to be using the Apogee clothing line. It's a really great men's clothing. And, uh, the Catch Restaurant in Key Largo at Mile Marker 102, Oceanside, open every day of the week for lunch and dinner. Happy hour, 3.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday with great drink and food prices. And they have great seafood dishes and non-seafood dishes if you have a catch that you caught on one of these fishing trips and you have some filleted fish and you like to have them cooked up, they'll cook it away up almost any way you want. And they'll provide the sides and stuff like that. It's a great idea. So come to the catch. Uh, tell them that the Keys bartender sent you. And if you have any questions, please send your questions to jim at keysbartender.com. Thank you very much and have a great day.